I educate children on their rights, and that sees me work with children, their teachers and parents, and I've delivered workshops in about 140 schools. I see how autism is a spectrum of behaviours. On one hand, it can cause children to experience social difficulties, anxiety, obsessive traits and disruptive habits. But on the other hand, it provides children with incredible gifts in memory, focus, detail and visual perception. No two children experience this spectrum in the same way. I meet children who might be nonverbal, children who are genius innovators and in a galaxy all on their own. And what led me to that rethink was an earlier meeting I had with a mum named Lisa. Lisa had been talking to me about her disruptive child. Imagine if, simply because your child doesn't know how to socialise with other children, the world outcast your son or daughter as the weird one. People start to whisper about you as a parent. You're called the bad parent. People start to ban you from children's play dates because your child is just too hard work. Enough eyebrows get raised about your child that you're referred to child psychiatrists, where your child is placed in the fishbowl for seven months as all the experts stare at the strange ways that he or she moves. That was Lisa's life. She told me how the experts called her up and invited her to a meeting where they sat her down and said this. Lisa, we're sorry to say that everything that you find fascinating about your child is actually a problem. Everything that you thought you were doing right about your parenting, you're actually doing wrong. Your child has high-functioning autism. That means your child can function, but there's lots of things your child can't do. Your child will be withdrawn, socially inept, obsessive and have anxiety. It's highly likely that your child will get worse, so we recommend that you involve this service in your life constantly. I believe we need to rethink because... Lisa is my mother. And I am that child on the autism spectrum. A friend and I agree that men are from Mars, women are from Venus, and autistic people are from Pluto. <laughs> if we go to this next slide. My brother on the left, Stephen, the boy's boy, he's definitely from Mars. My sister Marion in the middle, she's from Venus. And the boy on the right, with his socks pulled up, <laughs> with his shirt tucked in, his top button done up, and a comb over without one hair out of place, he's from Pluto. <laughs> I look at it now and I'm like, I was just ahead of my time. <laughs> I'm basically donning the eight-year-old hipster. I mean, I basically paved the way. <laughs> but if we actually entertain this thought for a second, Pluto in our solar system has this fundamentally unique orbit. It moves in a different way. And it's the same for children on the autism spectrum. Our orbit, or our mind, just moves differently. That doesn't mean there's things we can't do. How we can do most things, and we can even throw in a little extra. Our mind can move like lightning on certain subjects. Language, spelling and words were well, what did it for me. But our mind, our orbit, can sometimes take longer to adapt in the area of social skills. But it does adapt. I can't tell you how confusing my literal mind found sarcasm as a kid. Let's just say you could take a joke a long way. And so I realised that when Sarah said to me, I guess having Asperger's means that there's things I can't do, that she's in an environment where people stare at her different orbit and point at it as a deficit. 
Whereas I came from an environment where my brave mother removed my disorder by creating an environment free of the stigma that would inhibit me. 20 years has passed since I was diagnosed. Experts no longer talk to parents like that. Health innovations have come a long way. But in my work, I see this stigma holding kids back all the time. And it's going to require all of us to do something about it. Because we're all going to work with people on this spectrum. One in 88 children in the United States are diagnosed as being on the autism spectrum. And these children can bring extraordinary value to your life. Here is Leonardo da Vinci. Author Michael Gelb has researched da Vinci's life, looked at the way he gathered notes, his visual perception, his detail and focus, and concluded that this man was far advanced on the autism spectrum. Look at the value he gave us. You know, the Renaissance. Now, the lesson from da Vinci's life is not that every child on the autism spectrum is going to be exactly like him, because they can't be. You know, it's a very broad spectrum. The lesson is, though, that this man had a network of people around him that worked on his gifts and helped him control his difficulties. That network, his ICANN network, started when his father, Piero, took his son's paintings to a painter friend named Verrocchio and said, look at what my son is doing. And Verrocchio looked at these paintings and instead of pointing a finger at a different orbit, he said, bring me into that orbit. Now consider this. Do you think if da Vinci was born today, he would be able to do now what he did then? I worry that our tendency to mark kids, to label, to hold them back, is stifling the da Vinci's of today. 